Gypsies have long been among the most mysterious, exotic people on earth. They have been described as a race of nomads who have no real home. Gypsy history remained unknown for centuries, largely because they had no written language, and strangely enough, they had forgotten where they came from. Gypsies are noted in the 12th century history of Constantinople as bear keepers, snake charmers, fortune tellers, and sellers of magic amulets to ward off the evil eye. Gypsies first surfaced in Switzerland, Hungary, Germany, and Spain in 1414. During this time, they traveled about with papers from the Holy Roman Emperor Sigmund's. In Switzerland, it was noted that gypsies wore rags that resembled blankets, but were be bedecked in gold and silver jewelry. The gypsy women became known as palm readers. In the 15th century, the gypsies spread many myths about themselves around Europe. The greatest of these myths was outlined in a forged papal letter. The letter stated that the gypsies had been sentenced by the Pope for their collective sins to live as nomads, never to sleep in a bed. Along with that sad tale, the letter instructed the people reading it to give the gypsies food, money, and beer, and exempt them from any tolls and taxes. In 1696, Sultan Mustafa II issued orders for gypsies to be disciplined for their immoral and disorderly lifestyles. They were described as pimps and prostitutes. Gypsies are first noted as musicians in European history in 1469 in Italy. But in 1493, they were banned from Milan because they were considered beggars and thieves who disturbed the peace. It was said that the gypsy women cast spells and practiced witchcraft. Settled people are usually suspicious of rootless, masterless wanderers with no fixed address. The gypsies traveled about Europe as did no other people, so they knew more than most about what was happening in various countries and the activities of their inhabitants. This led to rumors that gypsies were being used as spies. In 1497, the Holy Roman Empire issued a decree that expelled all gypsies from Germany for espionage. 133 laws against gypsies were passed in the Holy Roman Empire between 1551 and 1774. One of those, passed in 1710, made it a crime to be a gypsy woman or an old gypsy man in Germany. To be a gypsy man in Germany was to be given a life sentence of prison with hard labor. Children of gypsy people were taken away from them and put into Christian homes. In the face of this persecution, we find gypsy men in Germany forming gangs and turning violent in the 18th century. In view of this violence, the King of Prussia decided in 1790 that gypsy men should all be drafted into the military. Other European countries followed suit, and gypsy men have since served as soldiers for every country in Europe. We first find gypsies in Scotland in 1505 as tinkers, peddlers, and dancers. Billy Marshall was a famous gypsy king in Scotland. He died in 1792 after living 120 years. Billy Marshall fathered over 100 children, some by his 17 wives and some by other women. In England, the Egyptian Act of 1530 was passed to expel gypsies from the realm for being vagabonds. In 1562, Queen Elizabeth signed an order designed to force gypsies 
to settle into permanent dwellings. Under King James I, England began to deport gypsy people to the American colonies, as well as Jamaica and Barbados. Dumping undesirables into the colonies became a widespread practice, not only gypsies, but also thieves, beggars, and whores. Abram Wood and his family were the first gypsies to settle in Wales in 1730. Abram was a great fiddler and a storyteller. He became known as the King of the Welsh Gypsies. The sons and grandsons of Abram Wood mastered the national instrument of Wales, the harp. In Provence, it seems the Gypsies were welcomed. It was there they first began to be called Bohemians. People flocked to them to have their fortunes told. The gypsies claimed to have dukes and counts among them, and later added captains and kings. The Spanish nobility protected the gypsies at first. Gypsy women were adored for their beauty and seductive charms. Gypsy men were admired as excellent judges of the quality of horses, and hired by nobles to procure them for their stables. But in 1499, King Charles expelled all gypsies from Spain under penalty of enslavement. Portugal banned gypsies in 1526, and any of them born there were deported to the Portuguese African colonies. The first record of gypsy people being deported to Brazil appears in 1574. Whole groups of them were sent to Brazil in 1686. There were also times in the 17th century when the policy was only to send gypsy women to the colonies, while the men were enslaved on galleys. The King of France, Charles IX, banned gypsies in 1561. He ordered that any gypsy man caught in France be sentenced to three years on the galleys, in spite of the fact that they were pronounced a non-violent people. In 1607, Henry IV enjoyed gypsy dancers at his court. But by 1666, gypsy men were again condemned to galleys, this time for life, and gypsy women caught in France had their heads shaved. The gypsies were declared royal servants in Hungary and valued as smiths and makers of fine weaponry. They were called Pharaoh's people on official Hungarian documents. Gypsies were expelled from Denmark in 1536 and Sweden in 1560. All these problems with the authorities of European countries had the result that a large number of gypsy encampments were set up in remote areas on borders since police had no authority beyond their province. Gypsies were known as an exceptionally proud people. Parents loved their children very much, but did not educate them. The gypsy way of life was contrary to the rules of every organized society, and those who did settle down were disdained by those who continued as nomads. It is estimated that 800,000 gypsies lived in Europe by the year 1800. They were most numerous in the Balkans and had a substantial presence in Spain and Italy. About this time, a German scholar, Heinrich Gelman, proved that the Romani language was linked to some languages of India. During the 19th century, gypsies became prominent as musicians, chiefly in Hungary, Spain, and Russia. In Russia, gypsies were beloved more for their singing talents. Most every noble family employed a gypsy chorus, with gypsy women who were also dancers in the main roles, accompanied by a seven-string Russian guitar. In Victorian England, we see the emergence of gypsy caravans with horse-drawn wagons, vardos, and donkeys or mules in train. Nomadic gypsies still lived in tents, even in winter. 
The gypsy folk are noted at this time as tinkers, potters, basket makers, and brush makers. It appears that the gypsy population in Britain was about 13,000 by 1900. The gypsy served a useful function by distributing goods to remote towns and villages, not yet served by trains. They enlivened village festivals with their musicianship singing and dancing. They gained a good reputation as people who could repair most anything. Townsfolk would await the arrival of the travelers to hear the latest news and gossip from other parts of the realm. Before World War I, Gypsies drew huge crowds in England and France when they would wander into a town. People longed to see gypsy women in person, with gold coins around their necks and bosoms, as well as in their hair plates. Gypsy men would call on factories, breweries, hotels, and restaurants in search of work repairing copper vessels. The United States welcomed a large number of gypsies from 1880 to 1914. These people joined circuses as animal trainers and performers. Passenger manifests show that they brought bears and monkeys with them across the Atlantic. Thank you for watching my video. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. And have a wonderful evening.